Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to everybody. For this slot, you'll be listening to Miss Siti Raiza Binti Jasman and her topic for this slot is smart speaking. For your information, Miss Siti Raiza has a very vast experience as a marker for smart speaking and we really hope that you'll get a lot of helpful tips and tricks as far as scoring in smart speaking tests is concerned. My name is Mr. Rizal Nawi and together with my two friends, Mr. Rohaizat bin Abdul Aziz and Madam Norazlina Kamdani, we are the moderators for this lot. So if you have questions regarding word speaking tests, feel free to ask in the chat or comment section below. We'll try our best to help you. Without further ado, I give to you Madam Siti Rohaiza. Thank you. All right. Alright, thank you moderator. Okay, hi and assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to Virtual Med Coaching 2021 or VMC 2021, an initiative by College Matriculasi Negeri Semilan. And I am Miss Siti Raiza Binti Jasmine. And today I will share with you the tricks and the tips on how to ease Muet speaking paper. Are you ready? Let's do Okay, everyone. For my presentation today, I will start by describing word speaking test format first. Then, I will enlighten you on the structures and stages involved in task A, the individual presentation. In addition, I will share with you the do's and the don'ts in completing the task. After that, we will view two videos prepared by my students for you to evaluate their strengths and their weaknesses. After viewing and evaluating the videos, we will move on to task B, group discussion or group interaction. Similarly, the structures and steps involved in task B will be revealed too. Next, I will continue with the list of the do's and the don'ts in carrying out task B. After scrutinizing, the list, we will view a sample video on how task B is conducted. Finally, I would end my presentation by sharing with you relevant tips on how to pass Muet speaking tests with flying colors. Let's get started. Okay, everyone, before I go on with the test format and the structure, let me share with you the seating arrangement first. The picture shown below is meant to give you a rough view on how the real Muet speaking test environment would be like. As you can see, there will be four candidates and two examiners involved. Okay, and the candidates are candidate A, candidate B, candidate C, and candidate D. However, bear in mind 
that the arrangement might change due to the social distancing policy imposed by the government. Basically, Next speaking test consists of two tasks, task A, individual presentation, and task B, group interaction or group discussion. Task A is carried out first, followed by task B, and candidates are given one minute to read the instruction and task given, and 30 minutes to perform the task. Before the test starts, remember... Candidates are given one minute to read and understand the question. After one minute, candidates are allowed to ask questions to examiners. So what can you ask here? Candidates are only allowed to ask meanings of difficult words in the given task. Okay, now let's move on to task A or the individual presentation. For task A, all candidates are given two minutes to prepare a response and then each candidate is given two minutes to present views. Okay, and for task A, all four candidates will be given the same situation. However, all these four candidates will receive a different suggestion or opinion or view or solution to elaborate. Okay, here are the six steps you can follow in order to carry out task A. Number one, study the situation carefully. Read every line, read every word, and make sure you understand what you are required to do. Number two, prepare only the point assigned for you. Remember, for task A, you can only agree on the point given to you. For example, if you are candidate A, so you have to elaborate and prepare points specifically only for candidate A. 3. Prepare at least two points to support your main ideas and also please give relevant examples to support your main ideas. If possible, try to give the current examples that will make your speech more interesting. Number 4. Maximize the two minutes given to you. If you can't finish, it's okay. Save the points to be used in task B later. Number five. Here is, this is very important. If you think you don't nail it, don't give up. You still can perform and score in task B. And here, number six. While your friends are presenting, shut down points to use for your discussion. They will be very useful later. So, how to survive task A? Basically, task A is divided into two parts. Part 1, the preparation part, and part 2, the delivery part. For the preparation part, there are three steps involved. Number 1, understand the task. You need to understand the situation given carefully. You need to underline important keywords and analyze tasks and focus on the task. After that, you need to brainstorm in order to gather ideas. Okay, jot down at least three main points quickly and you can draw a mind map to expand points and use keywords or phrases to help you in your speech delivery later. And then number three, combine ideas. How do you combine ideas? You can organize your points. You can number your points, insert linkers or useful expression near the number and remember your introduction and conclusion as well. Okay, now we move on to delivery part. In delivery part, remember that you need to represent confidently, okay? So you need to have good voice clarity, you need to maintain eye contact, and make sure that you, your voice can be heard by both examiners, okay? And your ideas must flow smoothly. Make sure you use the correct linkers or discourse markers in order to help you with your organization of your speech. And then, after you finish presenting your task A, you need to gather points for task B because later you need to argue and discuss in order to carry out task B. Okay, dear viewers, this is the suggested speech outline for task A. In task A, you need to have the introduction, the body with the minimum of two points, and conclusion. In your introduction, you may start your speech by greeting the examiners. You can say, 
good morning, good afternoon, a very good morning, or you can say Assalamualaikum or hi too. And then you can continue by stating your point of view regarding the topic given. Okay, for the body, you can present point one and then elaborate and give examples, followed by point two, elaborate and give examples, and point three, elaborate and give examples. And remember to use linkers or cohesive devices in order to link your points from point one to point three. If you can't have three points, you need to at least have two points to kill the two minutes time given to you. Okay, for the conclusion, you need to summarize your points and don't forget to thank the examiners. Okay, now allow me to show you one video prepared by my students, Amira Farhana and friends, using this topic. Discuss which of the following is the best way to save money and her point is spending less on entertainment. Note that in her speech, she tried out the suggested speech outline shared earlier. Okay. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Amira Fahana. Today, I'm going to talk about spending less on entertainment is the best way to, to save money. Spending money on movies, TV and special events can cost you a surprising amount per time. The average family spends around 1000 per year for entertainment. That is a number that can greatly reduce by budgeting. So I'm going to tell you guys some tips on how to spend less on entertainment. The first step to reduce entertainment costs is splitting entertainment memberships with roommates or friends. Share the cost of a music, video game or movies with them. Many services allow us to add multiple users without spending more money, such as Netflix, iFlix, and Spotify. Other than that, we can listen to music via streaming service. Instead of purchasing every song you listen to, try a music streaming service. Most services allow us to listen to any song on online without downloading. Many of these services often have an ad-free subscription for a low cost. But there are also some services that offers a free option. For example, Duke, Spotify and YouTube Music. Furthermore, we can also check out students, senior or other discounts. Many entertainment venues offer special offers for students, seniors, certain club members and members of military. For example, Golden Screen Cinemas and TGV Cinemas. However, we need to keep student IDs along in case in case we need proof of identification in conclusion there are many ways to spend less on entertainment these ways allow us to be able to spend money in an effective way and save some money for other expenses i think this is the best way to spend to save money that's all for me thank you bye Here are the do's for task A. Elaborate. Elaborate points and provide relevant examples. And how many points do you need for task A? In order for you to survive the two minutes, you need at least two points with good examples and also relevant supporting details. Maintain. Maintain eye contact with the examiner and other candidates. Please try to avoid total reading. Okay, project. You need to project your voice clearly so that you can be assessed accordingly. If they can't hear you, they can assess you accordingly. And then, after you present, please listen to what other candidates present and jot down notes to use in task B. Okay, I have shared with you the do's in the previous slide. So, and here are the don'ts. Right. Number one, don't create. Okay, don't create your own statistics, facts, quotes, and please do not translate BM proverb into English because they will sound so awkward. And number two, avoid total reading. This is a speaking test and not a reading test. Yes, you can refer to your notes, but please only refer minimally to the text given. Okay. Don't mumble or speak softly. 
if you speak softly, if you mumble, it will affect clarity. And again, if the examiners can't hear you clearly, they can't assess you accordingly. And don't feel too relaxed after your turn is over. You still have task B to perform. Now, let's view this video and based on the do's and don'ts we shared earlier, what do you think are some of the strengths and weaknesses of this candidate? Good morning to Paul Rahaiza and all my friends. I'm from S1 AP6 and today I'm going to share the best way to save money. In my opinion, spending less in entertainment is the best. Good morning to Paul Rahaiza and all my friends. I'm from S1 AP6 and today I'm going to share the best way to save money. In my opinion, spending less in entertainment is the best way. First thing first, what is entertainment? Entertainment is an action or activity uh, that is diversity that holds the attention. For example, casinos, watching movies, cyber cafe, fun fair, etc. But why would people spend money on a temporary happiness? To be honest, entertainment is unnecessary that we should not put it as our priority in our life. As example, between entertainment and household, of course, we should give priority in spending to the household. Although I'm agree with the phrase, reward yourself to value our hard work. However, we can't be comfortable with it if we didn't settle our commitment that should come first. Unless if you have extra tips, then why not? Many people could take entertainment as the first thing to cut when they're trying to trim the cost. There are several ways to spend less in entertainment in order to save money. One of, the, one of it is by limiting a budget. Uh, for example, plan things to do before hanging out like only go to shopping when there's a big sale and also bring along cash to avoid excessive use of money. Next, instead of going out for movies, it is better to streaming movies at home with family. It saves a lot of ticket fees and more easier to get along with family. Furthermore, entertainment is not essential in our main daily activities. People tend to release negative moods, ensure they do not get any mental issues. Instead of spending money for entertainment, we could do cashless activities like sports or weekend family gathering. On the other hand, people can build a healthier life and strengthen the bond between family members rather than spending hundreds for nothing. As conclusion, the best way of saving money is less spending on entertainment. As we become adult, we should learn between the needs and requirements. Not all the things that we need in our life and not all the things that we require for. Due to instability of economics during pandemic, we should become a smarter spender before regret in one other days. Now you know the do's and the don'ts in wet speaking test task A or the individual presentation. You might be wondering how would students of different bands perform in wet speaking test? Next. I will show you two videos of two different students with two different bands in Muet speaking test. One band 2 and the other one is band 4. Okay, and the question used for the purpose of the practice was, the local newspapers have recently been highlighting the problems of moral decline among young Malaysians. Discuss possible reasons for the problems. Candidate A. You think that the influence of television program is a reason. Explain. Okay, now let's view the videos. Now, I will start with the band 2 candidate first. So later, you can compare with the band 4 candidate performance. You ready? Teachers and friends. My opinions is the the influence of television program is the reason will attract the problem of moral decline among young Malaysians is some TV program will affect some negative uh, effects like sexual feelings from the te television program will Program it, they will attract the young Malaysian. What the television program are uh, attractive them. Then they will doing what things that by 
the derivation program are presentations then the mind of the young people will become negative because the effect by the television program then they will doing what they the television program will attractive them to do some uh, uh, illegal activities like uh, doing some crime like stole uh, people money and will going to stole the some all right so this candidate was awarded with band 2 even though she was able to speak beyond the 2 minutes given to her. Okay, she was awarded with band 2 because she developed ideas in a limited way. As you can see, she was struggling to elaborate points and she has many problems in pronunciations, intonation and stress patterns and in terms of delivery, she showed lacks of confidence. Okay, now let's go to Ben for candidate. The minister and fellow candidates. The local newspapers have recently been highlighting the problem of moral decline among young Malaysians. In my opinion, the influence of television programs is the main reason. This is because Nowadays, in the fast-paced of this world, parents are looking for materialistics. So, what happens is they go out for work. So, these children are left behind at home. The only thing that they can do is watch television, regardless of what programs. We know that there are good and bad programs, but youngs, they do not know how to differentiate the good and the bad. Like... For instance, if we want to talk about good, we can talk about national geography, something to do with scientific and all that. Bad things may be WWF, which brings to gang fights. Moving on to my next point, which is the youngs who watch these television programs want to show their talents to their friends. Like the, in the movies, they look about the vandalism, smoking and all that. They try to pick that up and do it in front of their friend and they think that is the style. Because of parents are not around, they are not guided, telling that that is not good. Therefore, they want to show that that is the style and they want to prove that they are the one who is the best. So finally, they want to be different. They want to be attracted by the rest. Yes, that's of course right. Because the youngs, they want to be attracted and they want to be famous and popular too, right? So what they do is, they repeat whatever it is to their friends, just for the sake of being popular. They didn't realize that being popular due to negative activities is not good. So in my conclusion, I really believe that the influence of television program is the main reason for this decline, moral decline. Thank you. Thank you, candidate D. Okay, so this candidate was awarded with Ben for because she was able to develop ideas satisfactorily with relevant examples given, even though there are some gaps in her elaboration. And if you notice, um, she was able to use appropriate and varied vocabulary, even though she has the tendency of using simple structures in her speech. She was quite confident in her delivery and generally her speech is easy to understand. I really hope these two videos have given you some ideas and guidance on how and what to do in order 
to score the band you want for Muet speaking. Next, I will show you the two videos of band 5 and band 6 users. Band 5 candidates are also known as proficient users, whereas band 6 candidates are known as highly proficient users. Okay, so I will start with band 5 first and later I will explain why this candidate was awarded with band 5. Two minutes starting from now. Um, good morning, examiners and fellow candidates. Um, for this problem of moral decline among young Malaysians, I think that um, unsuitable material from the internet is a reason. Now, most, uh, most homes in Malaysia now all have internet services. I think almost all of them have internet services. And then, what is what defines as an unsuitable material? Now, most of it is um, classified as pornography, Violent, violent materials, explicit, explicit materials, and and etc. You know, um, when you when you when you try to log on to a website, right? You see, a, besides the main website that you go on to, you see a lot of advertisements, advertisements at the at the side, and these advertisements they are very. They appeal very interestingly to the teenagers because they they feel that it's very. It's something new to them, and then they they want to explore this new thing. So they would, they would click onto it, and then once they click onto it, and then they will they will be inf they will be influenced by what's the, the all the contents of uh, sex or violence that that's uh, present on that particular website. Now, not only that, sometimes the, we don't want we don't, we don't want to go into those websites, or we don't want to find anything about it. But sometimes there are various pop ups that are created by these people that they will just suddenly pop up on your screen and then you just have to click it off or you can choose to click it in. And most teenagers, as you know, they have this, uh, they have this tendency to, to have a very, in a very great interest to know about this kind of stuff because they are just, they are just growing up and then they, they, their parents probably don't tell them this kind of thing. So they will feel very interested in it and they will probably go inside the, those websites. And then another thing is, uh, I think that in internet, there are, there's a lack of moral values for the, from the people that uses them. Thank you. Time is up. Thank you. Okay, the candidate was awarded with pen 5 because he was able to develop ideas reasonably well and he was able to give relevant and appropriate examples throughout the speech and in terms of language. He was able to use complex structures and varied vocabulary and as you can see he was able to deliver his speech confidently now let's move on to band six candidate um, a very good morning to the examiners and candidates um, the local newspapers have recently been highlighting the problem of eroding morals among young malaysians one of the reasons for this problem i think is peer influence it is undeniable that we all have friends and for that most young Malaysians in school will have their own cliques or gangs whom they call friends. Now it is very important that we need friends because friends are someone we can cling on to, someone we can share our problems and experience, someone to talk to as our confidant and also someone to share our common interests. But. Um, most of us would want to adapt in the school environment because it is like the survival of the fittest as we have in the animal kingdom that if you survive then you can live so we need our friends there to be there for us or someone so that whom we can talk to here is where the problem starts because when we want to be accepted by them uh, so that they can we can be their friends we tend to cater to their needs for example, if they ask us to um, smoke or take drinks just to join their gang or their clique to become their friends. That is how peer influence results in moral decline among young Malaysians. Next, we listen to what our friends say because we spend at least six hours with them in school. Apart from that, after school, we need our friends there because we don't enjoy talking to our parents, mostly because we want someone our own age 
whom we can talk and converse with. So thus, whatever our friends do, inevitably, we will be influenced by them, may it be good or bad, which actually depends our, on our discretion. Yet, if we have bad friends, we will be influenced by them. So in conclusion, I feel that peer influence is one of the major factors for moral decline. Okay, guys, this candidate was awarded with Ben Six because um, she is a highly proficient user and she was able to develop and organize ideas effectively. It is a very engaging speech and with good common of language, varied vocabulary, and she was able to use a lot of uh, low frequency words. Okay, and in terms of delivery, she's very fluent and confident. And I hope these two videos will inspire you to work harder because I believe when you put your heart, mind, and soul to it, you can achieve whatever whatever band you desire in web speaking. After completing task A, you will do task B immediately as task A and task B will be carried out simultaneously. For task B, you are given 2 minutes to prepare your speech and 10 minutes for the group to discuss. For task B, all candidates are given the same situation as in task A and they are given all four suggestions, opinions, views or solutions to the situation given. And the, the whole group need to discuss the issue to come to a group decision on the best suggestion, opinion, view or solution to the situation. Here are the six steps you can follow in task B. Number one, study all the four options carefully. Decide which of the four points you think is the best option. Prepare at least two reasons to support your main ideas and you need to give relevant examples to support your points. And then, you can agree or disagree to at least one point presented by other candidates. And when you agree or disagree, you need to give justification and reasons why. You need to maximize the 10 minutes given to the group as well before you come up with a conclusion. And tips, while your friends are presenting, jot down points to use in your discussion. So, you might wonder how to survive task B. Task B involves two stages, preparation and interaction. Okay, during the preparation stage, you need to understand the task. And since you'll be given the same situation like in task A, so you can always refer to notes taken in task A. And you can decide to maintain or change your view presented in task A. And during this stage, you need to organize your ideas carefully. Just like in task A, you need to prepare a proper introduction, body with three points and examples, and a conclusion. Okay, let's move on to the interaction part. For the interaction stage, you can either maintain or present new view to the group. And remember, since this is a group interaction, you need to participate actively. Don't wait to be prompted. Don't wait for people to ask you for you to talk. And remember to practice turn-taking. Don't dominate. Give others chance to talk too. When you speak, please be confident. Speak with clarity and also maintain eye contact with the other candidates. And please be courteous when you want to interrupt in the group. Always remember, you need to come up with group decision in the end. So please have a proper discussion with the other group members. In a proper manner. Alright, this is the suggested speech outline for task B. You Just like in task A, you have to prepare the introduction, body and conclusion for your speech. For the introduction, you can start by greeting the examiners. You can say Assalamualaikum, Good morning, Good afternoon, Hi, hello, and then if you decide to become the leader for the discussion, you may you may start and initiate the discussion. Okay, my advice is while waiting in the quarantine room, you can appoint someone to become the leader to manage the discussion for task B. 
after initiating a discussion, you can start by stating your point of view based on a given topic. For body, you need to present one point and then express and explain why you agree or disagree with that point and then you can ask for an opinion from the other candidate. If you are candidate A, you can ask candidate B, C or D for their opinion. Then you present point two and then you can say whether you agree or disagree and you can give opinion and so you can give suggestions. Okay, then the third point, um, you can feel free to interrupt, support ideas or reject ideas, but if you interrupt or reject or decline ideas, you need to justify why you support or reject the ideas. And remember, you must be polite when interrupting because this is a discussion, not an argument. All right. And then the conclusion, remember, is uh, you need to come up with a group discussion. So you can summarize points and then express group conclusion and close the discussion. And don't forget to thank the examiners before you leave the room. To give you a clearer idea on how to construct your speech for task B, here's a sample for you. And for the sample, I have selected this topic for you, which is, what do you think is the most effective way to overcome the problem of obesity? Okay, and um, I've highlighted the form and functions that you can use in your speech. Okay, so like to initiate the discussion, to ask for opinion, to express composition, or to end the discussion. In task B, anyone may start or end the discussion. It can be anyone. Can you do A, B, C, or D? Doesn't matter. Okay, so I'll give you some time to go through and digest the information given here. All right, so happy reading. Here are the do's list for task B. During the discussion, make sure that the discussion happens naturally. Practice prompting, turn-taking, and negotiating in the discussion. 
When discussing, make sure you maintain eye contact with the examiners and other candidates. And then when you project your voice, make sure you, your voice is projected clearly so that you can be assessed accordingly. And then when you discuss too, please justify and reason out why you agree or disagree with your friend's points. And then you need to also respond accordingly when asked by other candidates. For example, if candidate D asks you whether you agree with his statement, please respond whether you agree or disagree with the statement. Don't just keep quiet. Here are the don'ts or the things you shouldn't be doing in task B. Don't wait. Don't wait to be prompted to speak up. You need to display enthusiasm and interest in a discussion. Avoid. You need to avoid total reading. Remember, like I told you earlier, this is a speaking test, not a reading test. Yes, you can refer to your notes, but please do not refer too much to the notes that you have taken earlier. Don't mumble or speak softly because again, it will affect clarity. Okay, and when you interrupt or discuss in the group, please don't be rude. Don't be rude and rebut at the early stage of discussion. Let other candidates explain their point first before you can rebut or argue. And then please don't dominate. Give other candidates a chance to voice out their opinion before you can add in your opinion. Many students came to me and asked how to participate actively in the group discussion or group interaction. Let me show you one video to demonstrate how to carry out group interaction successfully. For the purpose of this demonstration, the topic I chose was how to attain happiness. And the options were A. Have a goal B. Good relationship with others C. Good health and D. Positive outlook Okay, let's enjoy the video. Good morning everyone. We are here to discuss the best way to attain happiness. No man is an island. Therefore, in my opinion, happiness can be achieved if we thrive on good relationship with other people. Why? Because it will be quite strange to achieve ultimate happiness. Good morning everyone. We are here to discuss the best way to attain happiness. No man is an island. Therefore, in my opinion, happiness can be achieved if we thrive on good relationship with other people. Why? Because it would be quite strange to achieve ultimate happiness, yet there's no one to share it with. Excuse me, candidate B. Your suggestion is good, but I feel that to attain happiness, we need a good health too. Without health, we would live a poor quality and even substandard life hence hindering our ability to attain happiness. Well, that's risky, can it be? The level of health will determine how happy we are. Excuse me, candidate C. I'm not, sh I'm not quite sure what you meant. Could you please clarify? Okay, as seen in the video, the students are trying their very best to keep the conversation going and to make it lively. So here are four suggestions on how to participate actively in the group interaction. Number one, you can ask questions for further elaboration or clarification or even ask for more examples from the other candidates. Besides asking questions, you can also respond to questions posed by other candidates. Okay, next, you are free to agree or disagree with your friend's view. If you choose to disagree, you need to give reasons and justifications on why you disagree with your friend's views. Next, apart from disagreeing, you can also agree with your friend's views. Similarly, when you agree with your friend's views, you need to give reasons or justifications why you agree with your friend's views. Then, you can add on to your friend's views. Give examples to support your points.
from what speaking text we have to express our opinion on the topic given. Most students will use I think when they present their ideas. Why be ordinary when you can be exceptional? Instead of using I think, you may use these samples to showcase your fluency. Okay guys, let's practice and try out this topic. In my opinion, in my opinion, parents have the greatest influence on a person's character. I believe, I believe that teachers have the greatest influence on a person's character. From my personal standpoint, from my personal standpoint, friends have the greatest influence on a person's character. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, famous personalities have the greatest influence on a person's character. From my point of view, from my point of view, parents have the greatest influence on a person's character. In my book, in my book, teachers have the greatest influence on a person's character. Well, now you can try using these phrases with different topics and share it in the comment box below. Okay, now let's put what you have learned into practice. Okay, now in a group of four, you need to identify candidate A, candidate B, candidate C, and candidate D. And you'll be given 10 minutes for you to practice group discussion using the given topic. Remember, in your task, you need to include these language forms and functions. To ask and to respond to questions, to agree or disagree with your friend's views, and to add on points. Okay, for this practice, the topic will be, a person's character is often influenced by other people around him or her. Who has the greatest influence on a person's character? Discuss which of the following has the greatest influence on a person's character. A. Parents. B. Teachers, C, friends, or D, famous personalities. Okay, have fun discussing. Remember, you need to keep it interactive and try to keep the conversation going within the 10 minutes. You can appoint someone to start the discussion and to end the discussion to make it more natural. Okay, have fun. So, how do you feel after trying out the group discussion? Did you manage to use all the suggested language forms and functions listed? Well, it's very challenging, right? Okay, the aim of this MUET speaking test is to make sure the candidates are able to speak on or discuss a range of contemporary issues in fields such as economics, science, technology, sports, culture, environment, education, and health. So, candidates will be assessed based on these three criteria. Task fulfillment of content, language, and also communicative ability. For task fulfillment, candidates need to understand the given topic and must show maturity in discussing the topic. And candidates need to develop ideas successfully and present viewpoint clearly. You need to elaborate points effectively and provide relevant examples. If possible, try to add in current examples to make your speech more interesting and more lively. You need to organize your points well and use proper transition when you are moving to a new point so that your presentation will be very smooth. For language, you need to use correct grammatical structure and you may opt for simple sentences if you are not confident because if you are unable to deliver your speech with at least one grammatically correct sentence, you might get a very low mark for language. Try to spice up your language 
with wide variety of vocabulary items. Don't add idiomatic expressions if not necessary. Be very careful with pronunciation, intonation, and stress pattern of your speech. You should be able to show different emotions through your tone and also stress pattern. Now, for communicative ability. For communicative ability, you need to be able to speak fluently, pronounce words accurately, and use correct stress and intonation, and project confidence during delivery, and should be able to interact well and maintain discussion in a group interaction. Be fluent. Speak with minimal hesitation and please show some confidence. When you enter the exam room, sit straight, look up when speaking and avoid reading from your notes. You need to show interest in topic and be lively and enthusiastic in the group discussion. So, you need to involve yourself in group discussion and create opportunities for you and for others to speak up. Don't wait to be prompted. Take the initiative and speak up. If you are able to do this, I'm sure you can score high marks for speaking exam. Now, let me reveal to you the descriptors for each band for task B, wet speaking. I will start with band 1 to band 3 first. Ben 1 is also known as very limited user because in the task fulfillment, the candidate will give very limited development of ideas and in terms of pronunciation, is heavily influenced by the mother tongue, sometimes would cause in incomprehensibility and when delivering the speech, there's no confidence in it and hardly makes any attempt to interact in the discussion even if the candidate is prompted. For band 2, or limited user, in terms of content or the task fulfillment, the candidate would have problem develops ideas where it hardly develops and then uh, with limited use of appropriate vocabulary and sentence structure, in terms of delivery, they will show a lack of confidence in delivery and in the group discussion, Normally, candidate, candidate with band 2 would have very limited attempts to interact in discussion and rely on prompting to say something in the interaction. Band 3. Band 3 candidates or modest user, they are able to develop ideas with some effort with moderate common of language where a lot of simple structures or sentences is used in the speech and not much confidence in delivery as well. And for the group interaction, normally band three students are able to interact but generally lack initiative and interest and needs occasional prompting in order for the candidate to keep the communication going. I will continue with band four to band six descriptors. Band 4, they are also known as satisfactory users. Band 5, known as proficient users. And Band 6 are known as highly proficient users. Okay, normally Band 4 candidates are able to develop and organize ideas satisfactorily, able to use appropriate and varied vocabulary and sentence structure. However, there's not much confidence in delivery. But in the group discussion, they are able to interact quite confidently and able to adapt to changes in direction of the topic at most times. Band 5 of profession users, they are able to develop and organize ideas reasonably well with good command of language but not flawless yet. There will be normally some minor errors but not glaring and then delivers confidently and in the group interaction, Candidate five or candidate oh sorry, band five candidate normally are able to interact confidently and maintains the discussion competently. Okay, here this is the highest band format, band six or highly proficient user. Okay, here you're gonna start seeing all very, very, very in every 
bullet okay so develops ideas effectively with good command of the language with hardly any errors uh, it's impossible to be flawless but normally band six candidates are the near flawless in terms of student in terms of language delivers very confidently interact very confidently and manages the discussion very competently okay My dear viewers, that I would like to give you the chance to become the examiners. Next, I will show you the video of task B or group discussion or group interaction. And I want you to try to ban the candidates based on the band descriptors shared earlier. You may discuss with your friends or your teachers and compare your marks with them. All right. Okay. Previously, in task A, I showed you two videos of students with two different bands in word speaking. Similarly, for task B, I'll show you this video so that you know how group discussion is conducted during word speaking tests. So, watch and learn. Thank you, candidate D. Right, let's move on to our task B. Flip the question paper over. Make sure you're looking at task B. Eh? So for task B, you have uh, you may maintain or change your views presented earlier in your task A. So I'll give you two minutes to prepare for this task. Okay, you're given 10 minutes for your group discussion. In your discussion, you may agree or disagree with the views presented by the other candidates. All right, and at the end of the discussion, try and come to a conclusion. Yeah. All right, you may begin. Okay. Good morning again, examiners and fellow candidates. I would like to suggest uh, the most effective way to cut down on spending is to prepare and pack your own food. By prepare and pack your own food, you will know the quality and hygiene of, of your own food. So that, so that uh, oh, by prepare and pack your own food, uh, you will, you we will prevent you then getting uh, food poisoning. So how do you all think? In my opinion, I think that the most effective way to cut down on spending is to cut down on transport costs. As you all know that to, uh, in this era, everyone of us needs transport to move from a place to another place. For move to a place to another place, we need transport. So we are actually spending a lot of money for the transport. For example, if we use our own car, we are spending a lot of money to, uh, for the petrol, for toll, for toll and also for the car's maintenance. So. Uh, to reduce this, we can use public transport, for example, bus, train. It will cost, but then it will cost cheaper than the than uh, than the original one. So, I think uh, the most effective way is to cut down on transport costs. What do you think, candidate B? I agree with candidate C, because um, cut down on transport costs, we can save more money, and we can also reduce air pollution. We can. We can share transport with our friend. Okay, okay, okay. And cut down on transport costs. We can also um, save more money because um, transport cost is quite um, expensive. Uh, may I interrupt? Yes. Uh, uh, I also agree that uh shop wisely uh 
is the best way to cut down on spending. This is when you shop wisely, you will know what you want to buy. Uh, you will make a list, like a uh, list to uh, to think that what you want to buy, or by listing the uh, by listing, you can uh, you you will buy that what buy the thing that you want, uh, not uh, not uh, uh, not uh, unnecessary things. So, what do you think? Uh, I think that I agree with the this point that shopping shop wisely is the most effective way to cut down on spending because we know that nowadays a lot of things are uh, become famous something like when we see some singer or something we like if they wear something cool or something some something like clothes when we see that we were also distracted then we wanted to buy that so when we shop wisely we do a list just buy what is important to us something like food or close that most important things. So I think that shop wisely is the most effective way. What do you think, can you see? I still agree with my point, which is uh, cut down on transport costs. As what candidate D and A mentioned is, uh, shop wisely is the most effective way to cut down on spending. Yes, we do shop, but then we are not shopping every day. Do we go to shopping uh, shopping mall every day? That is not our everyday life. Our everyday life depends on the transport. The uh, that's why I I mentioned earlier that half of our money or quarter of our money is the salary we take or or for the students the parents are, are giving us money. Half of the money is we, we are using it for the transport cost. What I'm mentioning here is we shouldn't like use our own transport. Most of us are using our own transport to come. Why not we use public transport? For example, bus, taxi, or even we can uh, do carpooling, which means that if our neighbor or our friend are going to the same place that we, are, we also are going, we can share their car and use their car to go. It will reduce the cost. It will save, it, it will save more than we use our own transport to go. Uh, so what do you think? Mm. I still stick my, with my point that shop wisely. You know, you have said that when we wanted to go somewhere, we need some, some transport. But we know that when we going to work or something, we need a clothes. So we know that there are a lot of clothes there. There are different prices. So when we plan it, plan it nicely, we can buy a good clothes with a uh, cheaper value. What do you think about it? Can it be? But shopping are not so necessary in our life. Um, we can take the money that we shop um, to like um, pay public transport fee and donate money to others who really need the money. And uh, may I interrupt? Yes. Uh, I also agree with your point. Uh, transport cost is the best way to cut down on spending. Yeah, <coughs> because uh, like Kendrick C said, uh, nowadays we all using transport. Uh, we all uh, spending our money on transport, especially when you using your own transport. You will still need use petrol. Yeah, and if you as the tool you need to buy, uh, you need to pay for the tool. So, if you're using transport, uh, public transportation, you can save the cost, maybe like thirty percent or more. So, may I interrupt? Uh, I still think in my mind that shop wisely is the best way, because we know that when we we get a salary, we just plan to shop what we want and to buy. So when we didn't plan it. Maybe we can we didn't enough money to spend on our money on transport. So when we shop wisely, if we, if we didn't shop wisely also it is it will affect the transport cost. Because when we spend more money on shopping, then we cannot we have no money to spend on our transport. What do you think about it? Can you see? Uh, I still stick on my point which is transport cost. 
as what we uh, are talking about here is uh, we only are focusing on shop wisely and cut down on transport costs. Why not let's focus on cut down on recreational and entertainment activities? Do you have any points for this? Cut down on recreational entertainment activities uh, is the most effective way to cut down on spending. Uh, in my opinion, I think that um, no, uh, recreational and entertainment activities not only uh, is like going to a mall or going to a cinema uh, or going to a going to a theme park. That's not. We can go to a garden that doesn't cost any any money. That garden for free, maybe for uh for a, a park. We can go there and spend time with our family. That doesn't cost any money. So, uh, what do you guys think? Like uh. Like you said, uh, when you go to recreational and entertainment activities, but you still need money to go there. Uh. Yes, I know. But then the thing is, uh, uh, I'm asking to uh, just uh, focus on this cut down on recreational and entertainment activities. The effective way. It might be an effective way, right? I agree with candidate AC's point that uh, cut down on recreational activities and entertainment activities by going park that located near to the house or somewhere like that. You know that nowadays near everyone's apartment or uh, house the there will be a park. It doesn't matter how big is the park. But we can use it as a how we, as as soon as uh it's giving us an advantage, good advantage and uh, good things. So I think cut down on reactionary and entertainment activities is also the most effective way. What do you think? Candidate B, you want to add? Um, I agree with candidate A and C, which is cut down on recreational and entertainment activity is the most effective way to cut down on spending. So, for one more minute, carry on. So, as the time is running out, we have to come to a conclusion. So, the most effective way of so half of us think that the most effective way to cut down on spending is cut down on recreational and entertainment activities. But one of you uh, is not agreeing with this, cut down on recreation. You agreeing with this? No. You're not? So one of, <laughs> one of the candidates is not agreeing agree with uh, this uh, point. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, so that's the way. end of uh, today's. Uh... So how do you feel after watching the video? Are you really ready for MUET? Okay, I have only one advice for you. Practice, practice, practice. Because practice makes perfect. So you need to start practicing and prepare points within two minutes okay and you need to also practice to know how to do note taking so when your friends are presenting you need to jot down notes to be used in task b you need to start practicing to speak in public so you can speak in front of your family members in the living room you can speak during dinner in front of your family members or you can you can practice delivering your speech in the dorm with your roommate and when after you finish presenting you can get feedback from them all right and then if you have no one else around you maybe you have been quarantined you can record yourself and then replay and evaluate yourself so you know which part to improve all right there's still time so you can start practicing now Guys we, have come to, guys, we have come to the end of my presentation. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And I would like to end my presentation with this quotation. The success of your presentation will be judged not by the knowledge you send, but by what the, listeners, the listener receives. Okay? If you wish to... To connect with me you may do so you may dm me on my instagram you may email me you can also connect with me through this youtube channel okay so now i'm handing over the session to mr rizal over to you mr thank you miss city rohaiza for sharing with us your knowledge and information regarding my speaking test we really hope that uh, 
her explanation uh, has uh, managed to help you prepare for your coming test. Please don't forget to fill in the Google form. We really want to know your feedback regarding our first Mind Online talk. We, ELUK MNS lecturers, would like to apologize for any shortcomings. We would also like to extend our deepest gratitude for your interest and for staying with us since yesterday. Thank you very much. We'll be seeing you. Dear viewers, to get direct access to the Google form for the feedback of this course, kindly scan this QR code. Thank you.